Today we talk about, does an ERA, which is an endometrial receptivity assessment test, actually improve your chances when going through IVF? I'm Dr. Mark Amels, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. You may have heard or seen on the forums that a recent study was done looking at the ERA and found that it does not help improve people's chances when undergoing an embryo transfer after IVF. Now, at first glance, it's easy then to say, well, what's the point of doing the ERA if it doesn't help people? But that's actually not what the study said. It just said that it didn't help everyone if everyone did it. But the thing is, We've never thought it helped everyone. Matter of fact, we know that only about 10% of people or less really need to have the timing fixed because for most people, if you just transfer an embryo on day five, it's going to be correct. So of course, doing a test on everyone is not going to help everyone because not everyone needs the help. Since most doctors already knew this, most of us only did an ERA when someone has failed a cycle or in situations where it's very difficult to get eggs, and if they only have one embryo, we want to make sure you give it the best chance. So what does that mean then? Does that mean you shouldn't do an ERA? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The simple answer from that study would be no. The average person should not do an ERA. The complex answer is maybe. Well, that was confusing. See, just because a study says something doesn't mean it's applicable to everyone. In this study, they empirically gave everyone the ERA and then looked back to see if it helped everyone. But again, we knew it wasn't going to help everyone, so it's not shocking that it doesn't benefit people to just give them the ERA. However, what they didn't look at is if it may benefit people in subgroups. So for example, if you've had multiple failures, would it benefit you then? Or if maybe you only have one embryo and it was very difficult to get to that embryo, should you do it to improve the chances that it won't fail? In the end, the most important thing to understand about this is, is that the ERA itself does not improve your chances. Now, what does that mean? What I'm saying is, is that the ERA doesn't make your chances better than what is possible. It just gets you back to what is possible. Meaning, if you could only get 80% on a test, no matter how well you did, that's the highest you could ever get on a test. And you took that test and you did great, you would get 80%. But let's say someone who wasn't as good may fail and only get 40% of that test. Well, if you gave a course to students and said, if you take this course, you'll improve your grade, then they can get all the way back to 80%. They can never get to 100% because it's not possible on that test. 80% is the highest. So the same thing kind of goes on in fertility. We know that the pregnancy rate never is 100%. And for a euploid embryo, meaning genetically tested and normal, we know there is about a 60% live birth rate. So if you do a transfer and the timing is off, meaning Even though you transfer on day five, your body needed day six or day seven, your chances are going to be lower than 60% because the timing is off. However, if you end up doing the ERA and finding out the right timing for you and found out you were off and then you change the timing to that time, such as six days, then your chances would go back to the 60% possibility. So as you can see, it doesn't get better with the ERA, it just gets you back to the highest potential that's possible. Many times, I will have patients who will say to me, how come it didn't work? I did PGT testing. I did the ERA. Why is it not 100%? And that's the point that I think is most important to understand. It doesn't make your chances better. It just makes sure you're doing it at the correct interval so that you have the highest possibility for you. So the first question that should come up is, why do we transfer on day five? Why not transfer on day six or day seven? Well, that's because naturally, when the embryo is going down the fallopian tube, 
and falls into the uterus, it usually falls in as a blastocyst on the fifth day. So we like to mimic natural, and so we do transfers on the fifth day. But there are some people, as we talked about 10% or less, who actually need to transfer on the sixth day, or the seventh day, or the fourth day. And the only way we can know that is by doing an ERA. And so at my practice, we tend to, if someone fails to transfer with a U-point embryo twice, we will then recommend doing an ERA. But on the same token, we have patients who only have one embryo, and it was very difficult to get to that embryo, so we don't think it's invalid to do an ERA because we know it may not make their chances better, but at least we're making sure their chance will be the highest it can be for their situation. So then, how does an ERA work? Well, basically what it is, it's a biopsy of the inside of the uterus called the endometrial gland. And it's looking for mRNA. mRNA is basically the transcription of your genes into a message that then goes to proteins that make certain other proteins. So what they found is they made a profile of when it's appropriate to implant. They found the profile for proteins are made when it's post-receptive or pre-receptive. And so when they take that biopsy, they're looking to see which genes are being activated and making proteins for those different receptive profiles. And then once they find that, they then know whether you need to transfer during the receptive time, post-receptive, or pre-receptive based off of the profile. And then they would adjust the timing and let us know. So I think the most important thing to understand is that the ERA doesn't make your chances higher than that 60%. Whatever your chances are at that clinic, that's the highest chances you're going to have. And the ERA being off will be lower than that highest chance. And the ERA being on time will give you up to that chance. The second thing is, as the previous study has just shown, it does not benefit everyone to do it. And so any clinic who is doing it for all patients is really just wasting people's time and money. However, I do believe, personally, that it is important to do selectively in failed transfers or in situations where someone only has one embryo. So for example, if you're 44 and you have to go through three cycles of IVF to get one embryo and you get one shot, it's not unreasonable to do an ERA to say, I just want to make sure the timing is correct. That way, if it fails, it didn't fail because I'm one of those people where the timing is off. But for the average person who has three or four embryos, it's not going to really benefit you to do an ERA empirically, but instead should wait to make sure you actually have an issue before doing the test. Hopefully this was helpful for some people. I know when that study first came out, I was a little surprised when they said it didn't help. And then once I had a chance to read it, I was able to understand that they didn't really look at the right patients. They just kind of looked globally at everyone. It was literally an example of doing a study that probably wasn't needed since we already knew it didn't help everyone. Obviously, the decision to do an ERA should be based on a discussion with you and your doctor and your situation. In the end, big picture, it is never wrong to do an ERA. It's true. It may not help you, but it's never going to hurt you. No one has ever not got pregnant by doing an ERA. It can only help. It's just the important part to understand is it doesn't make your chances better than what your possibilities are. It just gets you back to that possibility. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found this useful and maybe even helped you make a decision on whether to do the ERA or not. As always, I greatly appreciate everyone that listens to this. And if you like us, please tell a friend about us. And if you can, rate us on your favorite podcast medium. I'm also doing TikToks under the handle AmolesMD, where I do similar types of talks, but in like 60 seconds or less, making it very fast. I look forward to talking to you again in the next week or so on Talk About Fertility Tuesday.